In this video, we will take a look at a solved example on three different types of var. These are marginal var, incremental var and component var. We will review the definition of each one of them, their respective formulas and we will figure out which of these three is the most suitable or let's say the most befitting to use in any given situation. Okay, let's begin with quickly taking a look at what information is given to us. We are told that there is a portfolio that contains two positions, a short position on stock A and a long position on stock B. The exposure for the short position on stock A is minus 5000. Because it's a short position, the exposure is negative. You can think of exposure to be the dollar amount invested in any given position. For the second position, the exposure is plus 20,000. Positive because it's a long position. We are working here with a horizon of one month. So we are given the monthly volatility of stock A, that's 5.8% and monthly volatility of stock B, that's 1.2% okay next we are given the betas of these two stocks these betas are not with respect to let's say an entire market portfolio or let's say with respect to an entire equity index instead these betas are with respect to this particular portfolio i can interpret these betas to be the ratio of the covariance between the return of any of these stocks and the return of the entire portfolio, the ratio of this covariance to the variance of the return of the entire portfolio. Okay. Next, we are given the individual VARs of these two positions. These individual VARs, they are computed using again a one month horizon using a 95% confidence and using the normal distribution assumption. You can very easily actually verify these numbers. For example, this individual var is simply equal to the absolute value of this exposure. I need the absolute value because it's a short position. The absolute value of this exposure times this sigma times the z corresponding to a 95% confidence and that is approximately 1.65. That will give you an individual var of 478.5 for this position. Okay. Similarly, you can validate the individual var for the second position as well. Now, we are also given that the correlation between the returns of these two stocks is negative. It's minus 10%. So let's do this. Let's very quickly fill out each of these missing numbers in this table and then we will use the information in this table to answer three questions. Okay. Let's start by working out the total exposure for this portfolio. It's simply minus 5000 plus 20,000 that's 15,000. Based on this total exposure I can work out the weight of each of these stocks for this stock position. It will be minus 5000 divided by 15000 that's minus 1 over 3. For this position it will be 20000 divided by 15000 that's 4 over 3. That's what I have here. Okay. So we know sigma 1, we know sigma 2, we know w1, we know w2 and we know rho 1 2. We can use the standard formula for the volatility of a basket of stocks which contains in this case two stocks and we can substitute these values to very quickly check this that the sigma for the entire portfolio comes out to 2.63 percent okay once you know the sigma for the entire portfolio we can very quickly find the var for the entire portfolio it will simply be equal to z corresponding to 95 percent confidence that's approximately 1.65 times this sigma which is 2.63 percent times the exposure for the entire portfolio that's 15,000 okay so the var for the entire portfolio it comes to 650.9 so now we have 
this entire table filled out for us. Please note that the sum of these two weights is indeed 1. If I were to calculate the weighted average of these two betas, it comes out to be equal to 1. Okay, why so? Because these betas are with respect to the return of the entire portfolio, right? And therefore, the beta for the entire portfolio should come out to be equal to 1. Now, let's answer this first question. If the trader who is managing this portfolio were to remove the position in stock B, how much will the VAR of the entire portfolio change by? Okay. So basically, what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to find the impact on the VAR of the entire portfolio when an entire position is subtracted. The type of VAR that is most suitable to be used in this situation is incremental VAR. How do we define incremental VAR? It's the change in the VAR of your portfolio when a new position is added to your portfolio. In this case, we are not adding a new position, we are subtracting an existing position. Therefore, the change in the VAR of my portfolio in this situation should be equal to minus, because we are subtracting, of the incremental VAR of the position which has been subtracted. And that's position 2. Okay? What's the formula for incremental VAR for any given position? The formula is incremental VAR is equal to VAR of the portfolio including this given position minus VAR of the portfolio excluding this given position. Okay, so difference of VAR with and VAR without. If I were to include this second position which is on stock B, the VAR of my portfolio is 650.9. When I remove this position and I am only left with this position in my portfolio, the VAR of my portfolio becomes the individual or the standalone VAR of position 1, which is 478.5. Okay, so incremental VAR of the second position works out to 650.9 minus 478.5, and then the change in the VAR of my portfolio, if I were to remove this position, comes out to minus 172.4. Okay, the minus sign tells me that if I were to remove this position, the VAR of my portfolio will drop by 172.4. Okay, let's now move on to question number two. If the trader were to purchase an additional 1000 worth of stock B by short selling 1000 worth of stock A, how much will her total VAR change by? Okay, so basically these changes they amount to exposure changes which are given by these. Okay, I want to go further short $1000 on stock A. That means the change in the exposure for the first position is a minus 1000 and I want to go further long 1000 worth of stock B. So, the change in exposure for the second position is a plus 1000, okay? And based on these changes, I want to work out how much would my VAR of the entire portfolio change by, okay? Well, a straightforward way of actually working out this change in VAR is to actually incorporate these exposure changes, recalculate a new VAR, and find the difference between the new and the old VAR. Okay, so these changes basically tell me that the new exposure for stock A becomes minus 6000, the new exposure for stock B becomes 21000. I rework out these two weights, I rework out or recalculate the volatility of my portfolio based on these new weights, and then based on the new volatility, I work out a new VAR. Okay, now for this simple example, such, a, such an approach to work out the change in VAR is doable because we only have two positions. Okay, in practice, in a very production setting, 
recalculating the var of your entire portfolio because of some proposed changes in exposures may not be efficient may not be worthwhile it might be computationally too intensive okay for that practical that production setting what we can do is that we can work out the change in var based on some proposed changes in exposures at least approximately speaking using this concept of marginal var okay recall the definition of marginal var marginal var for any given position let it be the ith position is the sensitivity of the var of the entire portfolio to the exposure of that particular position okay so i can interpret the marginal var of any given position to be the change in the var of the entire portfolio when let's say i were to invest an additional $1 in that particular position when delta xi is equal to $1 we also have in place a simple formula to calculate the marginal var the formula goes something like this it's simply equal to the var of your portfolio in percentage terms times the beta of that particular position whose marginal var is being computed okay what's the percentage var for our entire portfolio it's simply 650.9 that's our dollar var divided by the total dollar exposure that's 15000 so 650.9 divided by 15000 gives you the percentage var to be 4.34% 4.34% times this beta gives me the marginal var for the first position 4.34 percent times this beta gives me the marginal var for the second position these respectively come out to be these two okay for the first position the marginal var is negative which tells me that if i were to invest plus one dollar additional plus one dollar in the first position which means that if i were to reduce my existing short position in the first position by one dollar okay then the var of my entire portfolio will reduce by 0 0.0762 okay the marginal var for my second position is positive which tells me that if i were to increase the dollar amount invested in the second position by one dollar that means i make it twenty thousand and one dollars the var of my entire portfolio will change by 0 0.0135 okay now these two are for one dollar changes in your exposures if i were to assume that for these proposed changes the marginal vars don't really change by that much I can work out a linear approximation for the change in the var of my entire portfolio using this formula. The marginal var for the first position times the actual change in exposure for the first position plus marginal var for the second position times the actual change in exposure for the second position. Okay, so if I were to use these values minus 0 0.0762 times minus 1000 plus 0 0.0135 times plus 1000 i get the approximate change in var for my portfolio to be 89.7 okay now if i had actually gone ahead with that approach in which i actually changed my exposures and reworked out a new var and then calculated the change in var the change in var would have come out to be 90.95 so you can see that our linear approximation is not that far away from the true or let's say the actual change in var okay so our approximation is good enough let's now move on to question number three in this question we are asked to find out on a percentage basis how much do the two positions individually contribute to the overall var of the entire portfolio basically please do keep this thing in mind that when we are performing a contribution analysis or let's say an attribution analysis or you can say a drill down 
to the individual positions of any given portfolio the type of var that we use is component var okay how do we define component var component var is given by this formula to calculate component var we introduce a very tiny relative or let's say percentage change in the position whose component var is being calculated we calculate the resulting change in the var of the entire portfolio we take a ratio of these two the change in the var and the tiny relative change that caused this change in var and the ratio of these two gives me the component var of that position okay if i were to take this exposure and bring it to the numerator i get this second formula to calculate the component var it's simply the marginal var remember this is the marginal var scaled by the actual dollar exposure for that position okay marginal var times the dollar exposure now if i were to write the marginal var to be var of my portfolio in percentage terms times the beta of this ith position and if i were to write this dollar exposure to be weight wi times the total dollar exposure for the entire portfolio this times this becomes the dollar var and then i have beta i times w i okay if i were to sum the component var across all positions in my portfolio because the sum of beta i times w i the weighted average of betas is equal to 1 the sum of all the component vars is indeed equal to the var of the entire portfolio okay and hence component var is a suitable risk measure when it comes to any contribution analysis okay because the sum of all component vars indeed is equal to the total var of the portfolio okay let's very quickly calculate the component vars for the two positions we already know the marginal vars take the marginal vars and scale them by the respective exposure amounts okay we get the component var for the first position to be 381 and for the second position to be 270 quickly convince yourself that if i were to add these two i do get the total var for my entire portfolio 381 divided by 651 tells me that around 58.5% of the total portfolio var comes from the first position 270 divided by 651 tells me that around 41.5% of the total portfolio var comes from the second position okay so in this video we've gone through a simple sol example which helps us understand three different types of var marginal incremental and component we reviewed the definition of each one of them their respective formulas and we'll, we have taken a look at three different situations where each of these three vars were individually the most befitting or let's say the most suitable to use